Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I am well. My name is Katie Sadler, and I live in Irving, Massachusetts, and our dog Max is 15 months old, and he is a Vicendi and Australian Shepherd mix rescue, and he is um, been experiencing cluster seizures since March, okay. and has had three um, episodes of that. And my question is, um, before he was diagnosed, he was afraid of, before seizures, I mean, he was afraid of the car and like being in the car and he would get car sick. But now that he's on meds, it, he's fine. But was the car sickness like a symptom that we should have known? So um, the sh short answer is probably not. But I is it all right if I ask you a couple couple more questions? Sure. Yep. So you said he's 15 months old. You've had him since he was a young dog. And yep. you said that the seizures started in, in March. What do the seizures look like? Um, we thought he was choking at first and then he fell over um, and his legs were kicking back and forth and that's pretty much he goes on his side and um, like loses everything and just kicks. Okay. When you say loses everything, you mean he poops, he pees, he salivates? Yep. Okay. And about how long does each episode last? Um, under a minute, like 45 seconds at the most. Okay. And they kind of come out, he, I'm sorry? He clusters, so he could have like, you know, six in a night if he has them. And do they usually happen at night while he's resting? Yes, they all, all have happened at night. And, and what sort of testing have you done for Max? Um, when we first had um, the first seizure, we had him tested to make sure he didn't get poisoned. Sure. Something like that. Um, he had some a lot of blood work done, and um, they found out he had Lyme disease. So we don't know maybe that was the cause, but um, they don't really know what the cause is. And like he's healthy, so they don't think a brain tumor um, or anything like that. So they say idiopathic epilepsy. Okay, and you you said in the the email you sent he's on two medications. What medications is he on? He's on Keppra and he's on um, the one that begins with a Z. So like, uh, yeah, that's okay. how you say it. And he's he doing also, well on the. He's also on CBD as well. Okay. And he's doing well on those medications? Yes. So, since starting the medications, has he still had seizures? He hasn't had any since he started the combination of those two medications. So did we start, for instance, the, the Keppra first, and then he had another seizure, and then that's when we started the Zanisamide? Yep. And he about was how just long, being Keppra. Yep. About how long was that when we um, started the, the combination? Uh, like a week or so ago. Okay. And between March and beginning of June, how many cluster episodes did he have? How often was he having seizures? Um, he's had three clusters. So, and each time he clusters, he has like six to seven seizures. And, and how, how long in between the clusters is it typically? I'd say like three weeks at the most. So it, it might be tough to say what's like in his mind. Like I'm sorry? It's almost like once a month he has them. So it, it might still be a little early to say what the combination of medications, even though it's nice that he hasn't had any, it, it's still yeah. early to, to see. So we're... We're really going to be interested in what happens when that month is up when he's supposed to be having a seizure. Okay. Right. So, so it certainly sounds like he's having seizures. What a, a seizure is is an abnormal burst of electrical activity in the front part of the brain. And mm -hmm. what we see on the outside when a dog's having this abnormal electrical activity, it's just like you described. They kind of go stiff. They lay on their side. They might poop. They might pee. Their legs go out. The legs may then paddle. It can last anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes. Occasionally dogs um, will have clusters of seizures. So many dogs will just have one and be done. Some will have two, but a cluster is when we have sort of multiple seizures, one 
right after the other. So six seizures, one right after the other would certainly be a cluster of seizures. So with regards to the causes of seizures or why does this abnormal electrical activity happen, uh, in general, there are three main things that can cause this. The first is something outside of the brain, like you said, low blood sugar or a poison or something like that. And we test for those with blood tests. So it sounds like you've ruled out the, the majority of things outside of the brain. Mm -hmm. The second main cause of seizures is something physically wrong inside of the brain. Like you said, brain tumors or strokes or malformations or brain infections or inflammation, we call encephalitis. And you're right. I mean, being that he otherwise is acting healthy, the fact that he's 15 months old, something like a brain tumor is unlikely. Um, but the only way to truly know that is to do an MRI, plus or minus a spinal tap. So technically speaking, we haven't truly diagnosed idiopathic epilepsy yet. Idiopathic epilepsy is the third broad category of causes of seizures. And what that means is recurrent seizures that aren't due to a problem outside of the brain that we can, can identify with blood tests or a physical structural problem inside of the brain that we can identify with an MRI and spinal tap. Mm -hmm. So idiopathic epilepsy is a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning we need to rule out those things outside of the brain and rule out those things inside of the brain with blood tests, MRI and spinal tap. Mm -hmm. so, he's likely or probably an idiopathic epileptic. We can have that highly suspicious on our list based off of the seizure started when he was about a year of age. Usually idiopathic epilepsy comes on between one and five years of age. They usually mm -hmm. are normal in between seizures, which it certainly sounds like he is. They mm -hmm. usually have generalized clonic tonic seizures. So that whole body stiff ball on the side paddle, like you're describing for Max. And then they usually have a normal neurological examination, which I would be able to, to tell you from here. So Max is probably an idiopathic epileptic and the likelihood is we're on the right track with regards to treating him with medications, but truly we have not diagnosed him with idiopathic mm -hmm. epilepsy. We strongly suspect it. So yeah. from a treatment standpoint, we treat with medications to decrease the frequency of the seizures. So if he's having them every month, you know, if we could get it to be every six weeks or seven weeks or um, every four weeks and two days would be, um, you know, would, would be better than every four weeks. Mm -hmm. We aim to decrease the severity of them. So some dogs have one seizure, but it lasts five minutes every time. So if we were able to make them shorter, say two minutes, or in Max's case, if we could get it down from having six at a time to down to having one or two at a time, um, that would be the goal of medications. So um, I don't expect that, and, and I suspect that your veterinarian does not suspect that they're going to stop all of Max's seizures with the keparin mm -hmm. zanisamide, but we're aiming to decrease how often the seizures happen, how severe each one is, how long each one lasts, and decrease the likelihood of having cluster seizures. So um, with regards to medications, these are very, very reasonable medications. I'll often start you know, in a young, um, medium to large breed dog. I'll often start with something like Keppra. It's relatively safe. It has relatively few side effects. Um, there's a large dose range, so we can you know, really start off at a, a low dose and then increase it if we need to. Uh, the main downsides are it's a three times a day drug unless you're able to give him the extended release, unless he's big enough for the extended release. But, you know, the typical uh, Australian shepherd, um, is, is, he more, is he more Australian shepherd or more Basenji? I guess, how much does he weigh? He's, like, he's about 40 pounds. Okay. So, yeah, something like that, we, we should be able to give an extended release. Are, are, are you giving the twice a day version or the three times a day version? Um, we're start, we are doing the three times a day because we can't get the extended release. It's too hard to get. Perfect. You know? So the, the, one of the downsides is it's three times a day for, for, you know, for some people and 
for, for most of us in the, the world of coronavirus, you know, we're, we're at home and can give three times a day medications now. Um, so I often like to start with that medication and, you know, then I'll move to a, a different medication after I've sort of maxed out one drug. Um, so it sounds like you're on the right track there. I guess with regards to the likelihood that um, his anxiety of being in the car was an initial symptom of epilepsy, uh, I'll file that sort of under the, you know, anything's possible, but it's not a common or probable thing that I see frequently where, you know, nine out of 10 dogs that start having seizures, in retrospect, we notice that they were more anxious or didn't like the car or something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. So um, I, I guess I, I wouldn't make it that, you know, Max is never allowed to go into a car again. But if we find that that's a pattern, yeah, anything's possible, but I wouldn't have it high on my worry list of, of uh, an early symptom or an inciting event. So I, I know you asked here about, you know, can, can heat cause seizures? Uh, I, I guess, strictly speaking, yes, things like heat stroke can lead to problems that can cause things like seizures, but um, the, the likelihood is Max is an idiopathic epileptic and there isn't a reason that it's happened, meaning you fed him the wrong food or he got in the car too many times or he got too hot. The likelihood is that he's an idiopathic epileptic. It usually comes on, but between one and five years of age, so he fits with that. And it just means the cells that make up his brain, his neurons, are just inherently more excitable than the normal dog or the average dog, and more likely that that abnormal electrical activity is going to spread to the rest of the, the brain or the rest of the cerebral cortex to cause those seizures. Yep. I also had like one other quick question. Yeah, Is he in pain when he's having seizure? And like how long does the pain last? Is it days or just hours? Great question. So um, the, the truth is I can't know what he's feeling, but mm -hmm. people that I know that have had seizures do not report that it's painful. Uh, many times they don't, don't even know that they had the seizure. So um, the vast majority of my patients, I do not feel that they're painful. I do not think that seizures are painful. Um, so all of this whining and howling and um, sometimes dogs even act blind or disoriented or they're panting afterwards, that's not because it's hurt them or the seizure's painful. Many times that's just because of all of that electrical activity in the brain. Um, many times just their, their body temperatures are elevated, et cetera. So, I do not think that, that Max is painful uh, during a season. Okay. okay, thank you. You got it, all righty. Well, I hope you're doing well and uh, thanks for spending the time to, to get on the computer here with us. If there's anything else that we can answer you, feel free to, to let us know. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, take care. You too, bye.